Hello, everybody. This is Martha Alter Hines with Living the One Light. All right. In this video, I'm going to talk about the upcoming lunar eclipse, full moon in Taurus that we have on October 28th, 2023. And of course, once again, there's so much, so much powerful energy in this eclipse. Um, and actually, I was realizing that my own dropping into what I'm really being asked to say about this eclipse is such a perfect example of something I was speaking to in the last video I made, um, which maybe you've already seen where I was talking about uh, about the way in which um, when we come into our own whole selves, when, we, when we're able to be held to come out of a trauma state, right? And go into then our whole, our whole wisdom, like our whole brain and then our whole being way of being, then suddenly things come through that are maybe what the world is needing, right? So um, actually I just had my own little mini example of that, but I was just gonna explain it um, because it's perfect and relevant. And I think it's actually relevant to this eclipse. Um, so earlier today, I, I was looking at the chart. I've looked at this chart of this eclipse so many times and I was trying to think, okay, what, um, what's really the most alive for me? And that's what I do anytime I'm looking at any chart and I'm about to make a video as I, there's infinite things that anybody could speak to on any of it. And so I'm trying to feel into what is it the spirit world really wants is alive here for me. And they really want me to speak. They want to speak through me about what, right? So uh, the human brain me looked at the chart today and saw what I've been noticing, which is, you know, um, the the moon will be at five degrees of Taurus. The sun is at five degrees of Scorpio. And, um, and Mars will be conjunct mercury in scorpio not too far from the sun so and we still have pluto squaring the nodes of the moon so that's a, a lot of what one could easily call potentially very difficult energy um and and then i noticed that chericlo is squaring the sun and the moon which is brings in like a much more healing energy but so i knew those were kind of basic elements but um but i still couldn't really i wasn't clicking with it wasn't coming through what was it i was supposed to speak to because that was still in my brain so it didn't feel you know like i don't like to speak to things unless it's really moving through me from the spirit world and it feels like it's meant to be said like i'd rather just not say anything in a sense really um, so what I did, I was also really tired because I, long story, but my kids got home really late last night and I, I had, so I was up late and then I had to get up early to take them to school and, you know, so mom things. So I was really, really sleepy and I happened to have a couple hours free. And so I, I thought, okay, I could either sort of force my brain to do this or some other kind of work or okay what am i actually needing i'm needing sleep so i went and i lay down and i kind of slept for like maybe 30 minutes and then i went into my praying and what came through in my praying was so crystal clear had not even dawned on me when i had been trying to think about the eclipse so what dawned on me it's like ding 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 obvious right this is how it works it's like why didn't my brain think of it <laughs> okay so here's what here's what came through in my praying at the end of my praying every time i i go through this process of of clearing anything and everything that's not of the light and then at the end i say i am highest quantum source light what is mine to do and then i get shown through the light and as the light whatever it is the spirit world wants me to know or see or feel or whatever 
So what I was shown was um, the first part is something I've been getting shown quite a lot lately. And I think it's relevant to the the eclipses and the nodes and the fact that this is my exact nodal reversal. So this is what maybe a little more personal to me, but then the second part is the part that I was told like that here, this is the point, this is the message. <laughs> um, so the first part was, I was, I was, um, I asked what is mine to do? And I, I had this immediate sense of this being pulled from my feet upward and flipped several times. This has been happening for the last few weeks for me. Again, I think this is related to my normal reversal, honestly, but it's also definitely um, in line with eclipse energy. But then what I was shown was, here's the part that I, is the, the message, right? That they really wanted me to convey. So they were showing me then Mars and Mars conjunct Mercury in Scorpio near the sun, which, which will also be in Scorpio, um, on this eclipse with Pluto squaring the nodes. So Pluto ruling that Mars and Mercury. Okay. On a very basic level, that energetic is absolutely easily, easily, easily could be, could be the energy of, you know, very, um, difficult words very lots of like anger coming up and power dynamics coming out in words and this is like a, the the i want to say the least um evolved that's not really the right wording i want to use but you get the idea kind of not particularly conscious <laughs> let me put it like that if so, if if this were being manifested in a way that's really not conscious and not aware that energy easily could come out in like big arguments and you know you did this to me and don't do that you know lots and lots of anger and and stuff from the past just whoosh, emerging because it's on the south node of the moon and pluto and scorpio and mars and all of it right um okay so that's the less conscious way of that manifesting but what i was shown in my prayers was number one chericlo like i said is squaring the sun and the moon on this eclipse and so chericlo energy for any of you who aren't aware um chericlo energy she's the wife of chiron and, and to me she is just she is the golden healing light holding healing space period so so what they showed me is actually that you know mars conjunct mercury um in scorpio is a gift if 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 met consciously if held consciously it's actually an incredibly beautiful gift because it's continuing the energetic that I've talked about in previous videos of this, this whole eclipse time, this whole, actually this whole time <laughs> right now, especially with Pluto squaring the nodes and Saturn stationing to go to direct, direct and on and on. on lo in lots and lots of ways right now, we are being so supported to drastically release, let go of the old patterns release and release and release and release and release and release and with mars conjunct mercury maybe it'll need to come out in words maybe there will be some or some kind of communication that needs to happen or maybe not maybe it's just with yourself maybe it's through journaling maybe it's through um sound of some other kind or maybe it's through crying or whatever it is it's like through voice or through there's no prescription to it right but um, there might be some way in which that energy has the opportunity to move that is through communication. And again, not necessarily with another person, it could just be in your own process. But with Chericlo there, she's holding the space. So you're not alone. 
in this like when those when those things are ready to birth themselves to to be released sometimes that can feel really scary and we all know that right can feel like we're going to the underworld and we're just kind of left with this like anger and grief and difficult feelings and then what do we do with that okay so the chericle energy is sitting there and she's 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 there she's holding it she's we're not alone and in that golden healing energetic space of chericlo the the energy the the gift of mars conjunct mercury can just be a catalyst to let the energy move it's just about energy moving it's not about the story of like so and so did this to so and so and then we're, like it's not a blame game it's it's literally you know on a more conscious level it can just be a gift of energy being ready to move and release with Cheriklo holding the space. And then this is also really beautiful and really cool. So then the part <clears throat> that it was also shown in my prayers, the next part after they flipped me over and over and over again, kind of that releasing energetic, then they, they showed me sitting on the ground on the earth, and I was being like um, adorned with like decorated, like I was being adorned with flowers and birds and leaves and like the earth was adorning me. Is that the word? <laughs> um, and it was really organic. It wasn't planned. It wasn't um, it wasn't manicured. It was it was like like the earth was literally coming alive as me. And, and then what it, what dawned on me, what I hadn't seen in the chart, the most obvious thing I hadn't seen, the full moon is in Taurus. <laughs> so, so I was so caught up, my human brain was so caught up in the Scorpio aspects of the eclipse, um, the sun being in Scorpio, Mars conjunct, um, Mercury in Scorpio, Pluto squaring the nodes of the moon, Pluto rules Scorpio, it's very Scorpionic, Plutonian energetic with, you know, all of this on the south node. It's like a, a human part of me just reacted in fear, to be honest, right? <laughs> Those energies are potentially pretty intense. But hello, it's a full moon in Taurus. How did I not notice <laughs> But it's a full moon in Taurus. And the full moon is very near Jupiter, also in Taurus. And then also we have, I mean, further away, but we have Uranus in Taurus too. Um, And, and another thing actually that kind of added to my little fear reaction was that Jupiter is going to be exactly opposite uh, that Mercury and Mars conjunction. So Jupiter is going to be at 11 degrees of Taurus, the moon at five degrees of Taurus, um, Mercury and Mars will be at 12 and 11 of Scorpio, I want to say. And so there'll be, so Mercury and Mars will be exactly opposite of Jupiter, opposite Jupiter. So Jupiter will be e expanding. Again, if you're thinking more from that less conscious energetic, Jupiter will be expanding the energy of that Mars Merc meeting Mercury in Scorpio, right? So, so again, if we're going to the less conscious version, that could be very expanded, <laughs> not great interactions and arguments and blow ups and all, you know, oh, um, you know, violence and um, power, power issues, power dynamics coming to the surface needing to be released. And so, yes, that's true. And what I was being shown in my prayers is, okay, but but it but if we come to a, a different level of engaging with that energetic, we have Cheriklo holding the space for us to release, to have the gift of releasing, continuing to release that karmic stuff that we just don't need. We're ready to move on. We're just 
release it. It's just energy moving. It's just energy moving. She's holding the space. And then the other thing that dawned on me, it's like, again, so obvious. <laughs> okay, Scorpio and Pluto energy has to do with release. It has to do with, on a certain level, death, but not, not death in a finality sense. It's death in the sense of death that becomes life death that becomes life duh right so when we release that scorpio energy that pluto squaring the nodes energy it's not that we just release stuff and then we're done that's not the point <laughs> the point of course is that this whole process is in service of life Cheriklo is holding the space so that the death, the release can happen. And then what comes next? Taurus, the earth, life itself, um, the life force of source emerges. So then the earth can birth us, source can birth us the earth and source together can adorn us can we can become you know ourselves as this natural beautiful being of light and earth and all of the above right how did i not see this but i didn't and <laughs> now i do um and i'll just throw in one more thing which is that actually chericlo is in this long-term conjunction with Hygieia and Eros, Eros, the, the god, you know, the, uh, the asteroid Eros, um, not Eris and not Aries and not Eris, <laughs> Eros, uh, the god of erotic, the pure, pure, my, my, my ultimate way of interpreting Eros is, uh, divine sexuality. So, so Chericlo has been in this conjunction with Eros and Hygieia. And I've talked about that combination of those three um, in other previous videos, but this whole year we have this, this conjunction of those three really holding space for us to come into a, a healing way of being with ourselves as beings of the true essence of Eros. I mean, like divine, like a creative love. So that just adds to what I was saying about the energetic of this whole eclipse, you know, really having the potential, what the spirit world is trying to say to me is, yeah, like meet that, meet that Mars conjunct Mercury in Scorpio and Pluto squaring the note, meet, meet the letting go. Again, it's a gift that... We're letting go for a reason and we're letting go in service of life. But where does that life come from? It's not going to come from our brain. It's not, not us, the human that is, you know, needing to like make it up. That's not the point. What they're saying to me is then when you let that go, then the earth can take over. Life itself can take over. True eros can take over. Cheriklo can be holding that, that whole space, the space of the whole thing of the letting go and then the rebirthing of ourselves in, in service of life and with the true, 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 true essence of the divine, the, the intelligence of the divine that is us as earth, Taurus, us as body, Taurus, <laughs> Um, and us as life itself, Eros, Taurus, etc. Yeah, does that make sense? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So I think that's what I felt called to say about this upcoming eclipse. So beautiful, actually. Super, super beautiful. Especially if we don't get caught up in our human brain. <laughs> can get a little bit scared and you know jump to conclusions um not that there was a wrong not that those are wrong <laughs> it's just yes the spirit world is here 
holding space for us to whew, come into a whole other way and dance, dance with it. That's what they're also telling me. Dance with that life, right? Dance, rejoice in it. We can rejoice. And that, that actually is in service of life. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you feel called to join me and Chris Skidmore, we are in the middle of holding this actually soup so appropriate, this Chericlo space of a two week container, which we started on the eclipse, uh, this past weekend. And we're going to have a second live gathering on the eclipse clips on October 28th, 29th, depending on where you are in the world. But during this whole two weeks, we are holding this this healing container where um, I've created, there's the recording from Saturday, which is still available and so beautiful. I think truly that was one of the most, it blew, my, blew me away how, how beautiful and powerful and healing it was. I knew it was going to be amazing and wow um so that recording is now available and in addition i just created yesterday two additional videos to um to basically support you through this whole time of coming into a a whole new relationship with your own inner feminine your own inner masculine which is a huge theme in this eclipse season and in this whole 18 months with Aries, with the nodes in Aries and Libra. Um, and also to work deeply with the, the, the myth of Eros and Psyche, which we talked a lot about on Saturday, especially the four, uh, the four, the four challenges that Psyche has to go through. That's not the right word, but anyway, four something. <laughs> she has to go through four things <laughs> and um we talked chris talked so beautifully about that myth in the time on saturday and so i created a journal to um i created two videos and then a journal a 30 page journal to go with that to help support you holding that space for yourself in this chair clo healing healing way of being with this whole eclipse time and beyond and then we'll be holding, you know, the second live gathering on October 28th, 29th. Um, again, to be holding it all in the sense of Chris and I both are craniosacral therapists in addition to being psychotherapists and in addition to being astrologers. <laughs> so, so the way that we really intentionally held the space on Saturday and we're doing it in this whole two weeks and we're doing it again on in the live gathering on the 28th is, is, we're very consciously actually holding it as a craniosacral healing time and healing space. Um, yeah, which is actually chair. It's exactly chair flow energy, interestingly. So, um, yeah, if you, if that feels good to you in your body and yourself and your being, please join us. We are, we would love to have you and, Love to support you and um, having this be a beautiful healing transformational time for you. All right, and there's so much more, so many other things if you wanting or if you're needing or wanting support in any other way. There's lots and lots on my website, living the one light at gmail, uh, living the one light at, dot com. <laughs> my email is living the one light at gmail dot com. Um, and if you enjoy these videos, I would so, 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 so love, so appreciate if you want to subscribe to this channel. When I'm recording this, I'm at 995 subscribers, and I would love to get past a thousand. <laughs> if you want to do me a huge favor, if you're not subscribed already, I would really love that. Um, yeah. And I mean, it sounds silly on the one hand, but really, truly, it's a huge gift to me. And if you like it, I love it if you click like, because then I know you liked it. And and I always love to hear feedback of whatever kind. Um, it's a big gift to me. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being you. And and I also want to recognize so many of you carry that chair clo energy too. And um, it's a huge part of who we are and what we're doing here on the planet, I think lots of you listening to this so thank you for being that and 
I'm here to be that for you also. And yeah. All right. Awesome. See you soon. Mm -hmm.